Mouse Playground. Hooray! What kind of a baseball team has a pitcher on stilts? A batter doing the splits? A kid umpire? An elderly cheer squad? Twerking, breakdancing, the can-can, rock, paper, scissors, flips, acrobatics, audience participation, a baby, fire, and only 10 rules? Why, banana ball, of course. ESPN calls it the greatest show in sports. I'm Lexi, and this is Delightfully Different. Today, I'll talk to the Savannah Bananas announcer about the new sport that's taking the country by storm. My name is the young professor, Matt Grafer. I am a professional live event host, and I am most notable for my work as the chief potassium enthusiast or in-game host for the Savannah Bananas. Well, first of all, tell us exactly who the Savannah Bananas are, because I don't know if everybody knows this. The positioning statement is we make baseball fun, fans first, entertainment always. What do they do? Well, um, it's that's almost an interesting question to have to answer because it's 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 hard to kind of nail it down. Even our mission statement, all that is true. Uh, okay. Fans first, entertain always. And, and if you ever come to a game, you will find that both of those things are definitely not just words on a page. Uh, we put our fans first. Every decision we make is with our fans in mind. And with that in mind, fans are coming out to be entertained, and we entertain always. We entertain from the minute people show up for our games until the minute we send them back to their cars. Uh, when it was, and what I mean by that is when you get in line at a Savannah Bananas game, we're trying to entertain you there. We've got DJs out in the plaza out in front of the stadium. We've got usually sometimes a few vendors and some of our uh, merchandise tents because everybody wants to buy some some cool yellow Bananas gear. Uh, So sometimes there's uh, adult refreshments and things. And so there's music, there's energy from the minute you walk up. And then even when you leave after the game is over, we all rush out to that plaza. We sign autographs. We take pictures. We don't charge anything extra for that. And we party after the game for probably at least 30 minutes, sometimes closer to an hour. Now, that doesn't tell you what we are, uh, but (laughs) it it kind of explains what I mean by that uh, that mission statement. But we are a professional barnstorming. Uh, traveling independent, what used to be baseball team, but now banana ball team. Uh, and we play this interesting take on the game of baseball because we wanted to make baseball fun. And we take it all over the country now. We are based out of Savannah, Georgia, and we are thrilling audiences from coast to coast at this point. Well, and I see a lot of stuff with you guys is going viral. The last thing I saw was a dude on stilts doing some pitching. And I also saw a little kid as an umpire. Tell me what kind of players the Savannah Bananas and their competitors have and what kind of antics happen on the field. Sure. So we have uh, two teams that travel with us typically. They're not the only teams that play banana ball, but they are the two primary teams that play. Of course, we have the Savannah Bananas and we also have the Party Animals. And both of them are creations of, uh, of Fans First Entertainment, which is our parent company uh, and our owner, Jesse Cole. So, uh, but the Bananas, the, the, the playing staff, for the most part, are guys who have had pretty high-level baseball uh, playing in the past, whether it was high-level collegiate ball. Some of them were draft picks and drafted into uh, the major league organizations and played in varying levels of minor league ball. I mean, that's typically where... Uh, the height of experience comes from. But we do have a few other players who have more of an entertainment background. So, for instance, uh, Stilts, Dakota Albritton is one of our players. He played ball growing up, and uh, but he is special because he is the only person in the entire world who is – trying to play baseball on stilts and he does it and they are uh five foot stilts and he's five feet nine inches tall so he's 10 feet nine inches tall out there and he is sometimes pitching sometimes hitting uh sometimes we will put him in the field sometimes we'll have him as a first baseman we have put him in as a pinch runner we're always finding new and interesting ways to use our players our cast uh and, and our platform to just entertain fans and make things fun and and of course the little kid is an umpire at some point yeah, so that kid, he <laughs> is not like a full-time part of our organization. That's okay. Nathan, the kid umpire. Um, he's doing his own thing, but obviously he's an interesting character in the world of baseball, and obviously that's going to capture our attention. So when we have been close by or when he has been close by to us, we've invited him out to our games, and he's made a couple of different appearances. He's even gotten to make some interesting, close, and accurate calls uh, in his <laughs> position uh, and has even ejected players who have argued with him, which – you know, makes for uh, for very interesting content as well. Oh. So it's uh, you never know. You never know what you're going to get because every night is different with us. How old is that kid? 
He is eight years old. Oh, that is so young. It'd be so funny to argue with him. <laughs> but, so you said that there's the two, the party animals and the Savannah bananas, but there are yes. other teams too. How many, is it a league and how many teams? Are so there? right now we only have two true banana ball teams, but we do play what are called challenger series games. And this okay. is where teams who are, from other leagues that are maybe not they're not hooked directly into minor league baseball because minor league baseball they're not going to send their draft picks to come and mess around with us uh which maybe someday you never know but <laughs> right now i think that's probably more of a risk than they're willing to take because if one of those guys you know if it's like a top draft pick gets hurt god forbid playing baseball with us right they got to answer to somebody because those are guys kind of trying to make their way into the big leagues, but there are other independent baseball leagues out there. And, and maybe a lot of people don't necessarily know that. So some of those leagues have teams that have expressed interest in playing us. And so they have arranged it. So we have played a few other teams. In fact, just this past weekend, we had an international team come in. We had a team from Australia, the Aussie oh. drop bears. Okay. They came and played three games against the bananas. And they played one game against the party animals. So that's the first time the party animals ever played anyone besides the bananas. And the first time we, any of us have had an international game, but we've also played against the uh, Charleston dirty birds out of Charleston, West Virginia. Uh, the Florence y'alls came to town last month. I think the, the Maryland blue crabs are coming next week. So there are a few other teams that are baseball teams that are coming to play us in this game of banana ball, which has some warped and twisted rules that are a little bit different from what you would normally see in a baseball game. That's what I was going to ask next. What are the rules? I see that instead of uh, getting walked, you get sprinted and there's coordinated dances that happen. <clears throat> Tell me about the rules and the weird stuff that happens on the field. Well, the dances aren't a rule as so much as they are a tradition and kind of okay. part of what we do. Um, <laughs> but you're, you're asking the right person because I'm, I'm the guy that stands out on the mound before every game and tells everyone what the rules of banana ball are. Okay, uh, now we have 10 rules. We we had nine. We just added one, but I'll, I'll go through it. the whole spiel for you. So okay. rule number one is every inning counts. If you win the inning, you get a point. How do you win the inning? Score more runs than the other team. With the final inning, when we get to the final inning, that inning counts the most where every run counts for a point. So the game is not about how many runs you score. It's about how many innings you win. So you get a point for each inning that you win. Okay. The second rule, and this is a good rule, a two-hour time limit on our games. Our games are two hours long. So, or nine innings. So if we can get nine, which we usually do, we only a few times this season have we not gotten nine innings in. Uh, so it's a two hour time limit, unless if we're tied at the end of that, because that's probably the next question, right? Well, what happens there? Yeah. We don't go into extra innings. We go into what is called a showdown tiebreaker. And okay. the showdown is one hitter versus one pitcher with one fielder who's on the infield dirt. So he has to play. So there's only like one fielder out there in the pitcher. So the pitcher has got to get the ball past this guy. So he doesn't score. The hitter's job is to score, uh, whether it's an over the wall home run, which is an automatic win, or he has to score an inside the park home run to get the next point. And okay. the other team can answer back unless it's a home run over the wall. So that's very exciting when that happens. Yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> yes. Uh, fourth rule, no bunting. Bunting oh. sucks. We don't like it. So we got rid of bunting. Uh, swing the bat. That's what we say. If you bunt, you are ejected out of the game. So we're very serious about this. No bunting. <laughs> okay. Uh, rule five batters can steal first base. So if there's a wild pitch and you think that you can make it and, and get there, guys will steal first base sometimes. Oh, we rule okay. six is what, <laughs> like you said, there's no walks. So ball four is a sprint. The, the batter takes off. They can go as far as they want. All nine fielders have to touch the ball. So what happens is the catcher usually, the pitcher and the catcher have already touched it. The catcher usually throws it to one of the middle infielders and they start this game of like hot potato. The, the, all the outfielders crash in on second base, third baseman, first baseman, everybody crashes in around second base and they're just tap, 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 trying to get there as fast as they can, trying to tag the runner out at second base. So a lot of times you get just a, a sprint for a single like you would for a walk, but some guys, if they think they're fast or the throw is bad, they can go as far as they want. And if somebody drops that ball, you could have a triple or even a home run on what would have been a walk in, in regular baseball. <laughs> uh, rule seven, batters can't step out of the batter's box. So you're not going to have guys fixing their gloves and adjusting themselves and fixing their batting helmet. Like, no, once you're in the box, you're in the box. We are we're trying to keep this game at two hours and get nine innings in. Okay. We keep it moving. Uh, rule eight, no mound visits. Again, that's something that throws that slows the game down. We got rid of that. And the fine, well, the ninth rule, the one that everybody loves the most, if a fan catches a foul ball, 
that's an out. It counts as an out in the game. So, so the fans there. can be part of the game. Yes, and the fans are very much a part of the game. I mean, they are they're the person that that's the kind of character, if you will, in our show that is the most important is because we involve the audience in as much of what we do as possible. And it sounds like you got rid of all the stuff about regular baseball that kind of sucks. That's the idea. Anything that is boring or slows it down, we got rid right. of it. Uh, and the last one we just added is a challenge rule because we've okay. we had some interesting calls that went, you know, that we in review, they they were not the right call. So we do have a challenge rule. Each team can now challenge one play during the game, um, whether it's a, a fair or foul ball. Uh, they can challenge a force or tag play at one of the bases or at home plate or a if a ball was caught or not in the outfield or infield. So each team gets one, and for the first time ever, we pick a fan that gets one challenge during the oh. game. So a fan, and we give them a confetti cannon. So if there's a call and maybe the teams don't, a fan can blow it and have it reviewed. So fans now are involved in that as well. That's because, awful. I mean, and that's the first time in any professional sport ever. <laughs> that the fans, I'm sure they got a lot to say too. Um, now, do they play as many games as like a regular MLB team? How many games are being played this in the season? Mm -hmm. This year we're playing over 90 games. It so like it's like a lot on your schedule. Yeah. It's not as many as, as a major league schedule, but we are playing 90 plus games this year all across the country. So it is, uh, it's the biggest, most ambitious schedule we've ever had. I mean, banana ball is still a pretty new game last year. For instance, we're on a world tour this year. We're doing 33 cities in 21 States. Last year we did seven cities in like four States. Uh, wow. the year before that, I wasn't with the organization then, but they did a one city world tour where they took the game on the road. So we have been really progressively getting larger at a very quick rate. Yeah. So right now I think it's still, we're still very much in that learning process, but we've got an ambitious schedule this year for sure. <laughs> it's exciting. Let's talk about you and your involvement. Do you live in Florida? I do. So I live 200 miles South of Savannah. So yeah, I, uh, how did I do you quite a bit of traveling. <laughs> um, so I have been a live event host for technically for about eight years now. Uh, I started as a live trivia host in, in bar room. So your listeners, probably almost everybody at some point has either seen or gone to a trivia night. And yeah. there's somebody up there with a microphone asking the questions and, and keeping the, the show rolling. So that's, that's what I started doing. And, um, after a few years and people hearing me on a microphone and everyone always asking me if I ever did sports or anything like that. I always said no. And then I finally said, well, maybe the fact that I hear this every week, there's something to it. So how do I get involved in that? So I, I started uh, and that was a little over five years. I started in professional wrestling okay. and then was able to land a hosting position um, through some good fortune with an arena football team. So I got some live sports hosting experience similar to what I do now with the Jacksonville Sharks arena football team working big giant shows, big arena shows, seven, eight, 9,000 fans uh, at the games there and went into minor league baseball as well with the Daytona Tortugas who are only about 30 minutes from where I live. Okay. So as I was getting ready to start with the Tortugas, that is when I learned about the Savannah bananas, because much as you mentioned stilts, when I saw, I, I love crazy minor league teams and stuff. I'm, I'm recording this in my closet, as you can see, which is very colorful. Yeah. But I've got lots of cool like hats from lots of minor league teams. And there's lots of wild names like the Modesto Nuts and the El Paso Chihuahuas and the Rocket City Trash Pandas. And so I liked all of that. I just thought the Savannah Bananas were another funky named minor league team. And I saw a video of them in action. And I saw this guy on stilts run and I went, well, wait a minute. That's, that's not regular baseball what is that <laughs> and i was immediately drawn to figuring it and once i started reading what they do how they do it and then uh, i picked up our, our owner jesse cole's first book find your yellow tux that book resonated with me on a level i can't even begin to describe for you and, and i knew like at the time my goal was just to somehow meet him talk to him and just learn from them because i wanted to be you know a really good host at the level that i was hosting and, and why not learn from the best because i was like clearly this is the best and that was just looking at it from afar but that soon turned into um an opportunity to kind of go up and see them and on when i got to come see them i had corresponded with him and wound up getting to do something with the team because their pa announcer was missing that game. So they they had some flexibility to do something with someone who does what I do a little bit in a way that they don't normally. And right. so I got to work with them once and it was intoxicating to say the least. It was the most unbelievable thing I, I had ever done at that point. 
And I, I just wanted more. I wanted to be a part of it. And when they announced the tour for 2022, I sent a letter and a video and, and just, I was obsessed with the opportunity to do it. And they weren't even looking for me. You know, it was, uh, it was not, I was not something in their cast. They thought they needed, they had another host at the time. They had other things covered, but uh, I, I didn't care about that. I, I didn't even want to necessarily do that. I told them, I will sell popcorn for you. I just want to watch you and learn and, and experience this. And they said, well, we're not going to have you sell popcorn. And so they had <laughs> me pitch some ideas of ways I could get more involved. And uh, after a couple of meetings, they, they invited me to be on the tour last year. And my role started kind of small and has really blossomed bigger and bigger. And now where I'm kind of a, a mainstay character and one of the hosts. So it's it's myself and Jesse Cole who host our games and go back and forth and anything in between the innings and, and a lot of the stuff before the game, you see and hear the two of us and we're kind of moving the audience from place to place to kind of keep that nonstop entertain always attitude that, that we promise our fans right in our mission statement. I'm Lexi, and this is Delightfully Different. Today, I'm talking to the young professor, Matt Grafer, who's the announcer for the Savannah Bananas. Now, how does it compare to being an announcer for, like, regular normal sports? Uh, it's it's not the same at all. I mean, <laughs> there I, I learned, I mean, I learned the basics of it in other sports, including in-game hosting, which, you know, doing promotions in between the goofy stuff that you see at minor league games or in basketball stadiums and um, and, and it, it's that, but it's that with the volume cranked all the way up. I mean, it is fast paced. It's huge. You're getting contestants. You probably wouldn't even be able to get at a lot of other places. You know, I, I worked in minor league baseball for two years. We'll run promotions where we get babies, where babies and crawling babies. And we have an abundance of them there because we have people of every age and shape and size and demographic you can imagine. I couldn't run a baby promotion when I was working in Daytona on like a Tuesday night because it's silver sluggers night and everybody's like 65 and up. So I can't plan for that. And I can't, so I have to build a show there a lot different than what we can build with the bananas. We, we know that we can pull together a lot of moving parts because so many people are there. And with that, you know, we've got, at least at home, we've got 4,000 fans, but we're playing stadiums with 10, 11, 12,000 people. And there's a 700,000 person waiting list to come see what we do. So we've got a tremendous responsibility to entertain fans and not insult them and have something that is really over the top, funny, the highest level of entertainment that they can get. So that's what we're doing. And we're not doing any throwaway goofy promotions that are just sponsored by you know, just some local sponsor and they, they want this every, every single night and it might be boring, but they don't care because that's what they paid for. That's not fun for the fans. We're doing something so much more and we have to live up to that responsibility. So it's, it's another level. It's another pace. It's um, it's the same, but it's different. Well, and it looks like your season sold out. I went on their website and looked and it, everything seems to be sold out. You've got tons of people coming there. And just recently you had a whole load of country celebrities in the audience. I saw them posting about it on Instagram. Did you get to meet any of them or did you even know that they were all there? Thomas Rhett and so forth. Yeah, we, we knew that uh, we had heard rumors about even a few more that might've been there that we're not even entirely sure about, There's but like I knew Thomas Rhett was going to be there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we knew he was going to be there. Uh, I did not personally get to meet him, but he did make an appearance on our broadcast. So if you go back and watch uh, our second game from Nashville, which was two weekends ago, um, which so late May for whenever people are listening to this of 2023, if you go to the second night in Nashville in the fourth inning, Thomas Rhett actually was up in the booth with our commentators. And he actually, uh, you know, talked with them and was talking uh -huh. about what we're doing and himself. So that was really cool to kind of know that he's kind of part of the show in some way yeah. as what we're doing. And we're starting to see that everywhere. I mean, we've had, um, Oh, why can't I think of the guy's name? He was one of the guys that was in Modern Family. But, but <laughs> he was out last year. He came to see us. Um, I know like Ryan Cabrera, uh, pop singer. He was out in Daytona and very understated. We, did, like, we didn't do anything big or kind of mention it, but he was there watching. And so, yeah, we're getting a lot of those folks coming out to see us and more and more. And we're even getting Major League Baseball players, ex-Major Leaguers, who want to come out and play with us and who have played oh. either on our team or even against us because one of the other teams that we played against was a major league baseball players alumni association team. So we had guys like Johnny Gomes and Johnny Damon and Lou Pinella was managing that team. And so uh, you get a chance to mix it up with guys who have been to the highest level in all of professional baseball and they're 
out having fun, getting really silly with us. That's got to be so flattering. Uh, do the bananas always win? Is it set up ahead of time? Like, uh, no, bling? Is it, are no. they really playing? They are really playing. That's probably the biggest difference because we get obvious an obvious amount of car- comparisons to the Harlem Globetrotters. Yes. <laughs> uh, but one of the differences with that is the Washington Generals never win. I, I think they had the Washington Generals haven't won a game, I think, in 30 or 40 years or right. something like that. Um, but the bananas games are not like that. In fact, the party animals have three or four more wins over the bananas this year. So the party animals are playing hard and they're trying to beat each other every night. Like we, we hang out together, we travel together and and some of the guys are best friends and roommates to some extent, but we get out there, we're out there to entertain, but they're playing and, uh, the party animals are hungry to win and they've been beating the bananas this year. So it's uh, it, it is not set up in advance. When if they're com- really truly competing, it's got to make it so much more fun to watch. Because you, might- it is because you can feel yeah. it because you yeah. know they're playing and like <laughs> you know people are like oh well this is stage. I'm like how can you stage exactly where a ball is going to go and these some of these really interesting scenarios. I'm like you know how good someone would have to be to like well we're going to hit the ball to this place and it's going to land here and then th- uh, yeah I guess people in their mind can make up whatever they want but. Um, <laughs> That's an overstatement of even our abilities. We're good at entertaining, but my God, that's uh, uh, that's not quite possible. So yeah, we're we're playing ball for real out there. That's cool. Um, now you guys have cheerleaders. Sort of. We have uh, we have our banana nanas, our all senior citizen, all female dance team. They are uh, America's sweethearts, as I like to call them. I, I mark them ahead of the Rockettes and ahead of the <laughs> Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. The true America sweethearts are the banana nanas. And we also have a uh, a dad bod cheer squad who are out there all the time. The Mananas, they're out kind of hyping the crowd up and mixing it up with them all night long, too. The Mananas and the Banana Nanas. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> so when the team goes on the road, do you travel with them to announce? Uh, I do. Yeah, I've been to the, the uh, I've only missed one game this season. It was this past Saturday because I had a previous obligation, but we played four, I've, 44 games. I've, I've done 43 of them. And so uh, the plan is to keep on going. So, yeah, our whole, pretty much almost all of our cast goes everywhere. The Banana Nanas don't travel quite as much. Uh, the Man Nanas, some can come sometimes, some can't. But we are a full traveling 10 ring circus is basically what we are. So we we bring everything, our merchandise people, our ticketing people, because we try to control as much of what we can at our show so that we have a consistency everywhere that we go. Absolutely. And then it's got to be, you got to be on the road constantly doing this then because you're not even when it's a home game, you're not even at home. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm completely on the road all the time. I mean, <laughs> I'm, we're talking now today is my second day off in a row and it's my second day off. And I can't tell you how long, uh, because every day is either traveling or, or performing. And even just now I, I just got back when we went to Nashville, I, I, we'd gotten home from Oklahoma the week before. I was home for one day, which was enough time to do laundry and get everything together. And then I hit the road with my family and we went to Nashville for the weekend. My wife and I had to go take care of some things up in New Jersey and New York for a few days, came back to Savannah. I worked in Jacksonville this weekend. And so yesterday was my first day back in Florida in 11 days, something like that. So it's you, it's a pretty grueling a schedule. Before yeah. you go again. <laughs> <laughs> just, just one breath. That's it. Now, the young professor, how did you get that name? Oh, I used to be both of those, of those things. I am neither at this point, but <laughs> I was a 25-year-old college professor. Man, that's uh, really young to be a professor. That's what I'm saying. It was. I was I was younger than a good amount of my students. And um, so that's what I did. I did that for about seven and a half years, for almost eight years. What were you and a professor of? In exercise science. Uh, so kind of related to what, what I do, do now, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, and I taught a lot of different courses under a lot of different subdisciplines in in the field. And um, but now I have my high school teacher by day. That is my. Oh, you've got like yeah, a day so, job. Uh, oh, yeah, cool. I'm not I'm not full time quite yet with the bananas, hoping that that is something that changes in the near future. And I think that it will. But uh, but right now I'm still living a, a Clark Kent Superman kind of life, <laughs> along with four kids and a wife. So it's uh, it, it's interesting. It, it never, you, never a dull sure. moment. What, what do the kids think? Not your children, but the kids that you teach. What do they think about it? Some of them think it's pretty cool. You know, I'll get kids even that I don't know. Like, I saw you on my TikTok because they'll they'll see right? stuff from the team and, and they'll <laughs> see me pay pop up in my gold jacket um <laughs> some of them don't care because they're they're teenagers they're too cool for school and it yeah. is what it is but but a lot of them think it's pretty cool which is which is fun what about your own children what do they think about it 
they like it. Uh, they they like you know a lot of the opportunities they get to do because I think they're they're finally kind of realizing they're getting to live lives that are that are very interesting in comparison with their friends or even in the lives that my wife and I lived growing up because I I didn't get to do things that were that fun growing up. I don't you know I, we didn't go many places. We didn't uh, you know we'd go to Hershey Park sometimes in the summer. And uh, that was kind of the, the long and short of it. I never even went to my first professional baseball game until I was 17 or 18 years old. Oh, wow. So, you know, my kids have been to dozens and dozens and they've, they've been to hundreds of events over all the different things that I do. And they've gotten to meet very famous people and take pictures and, and kind of hang out with them. And, you know, so it's um, I think my older kids in particular, because they remember what life was like before all this. <laughs> they appreciate it more. My my youngest daughter, you know, she's she's fun and everybody loves her. But I don't I don't think she quite understands that, you know, this is not how normal life typically works for people. Right. Do you think any of them are going to follow in your footsteps and be an announcer or a crazy announcer like this for the Savannah, Savannah Bananas? Uh, you never know. I, my my two youngest have probably more interest in it than the older kids do. Uh, my son, Adam, he's 11. He actually has hosted a few events this past year for the school. They they oh. kind of like tabbed him to host like a, a charity bingo night and another like mother son game night and nice. and a couple of other things. And so I've helped him kind of get some cool looking suits and stuff to wear so that he can really show up and, and shine and uh, and now he's looking for for more chances to do that, which is kind of cool. So yeah. um, he's got an interest. And, and my daughter, who's eight, she's very outgoing. She's got a kind of crazy personality. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see her maybe pick up some things uh, similar in nature. But time will tell, I suppose. <laughs> but you you mentioned your wife. You got I watched your wedding <laughs> online. Uh, the, our, our vow renewal. Yes. Oh, Vegas, the vow renewal. Ago. OK. Yes. With Elvis. Tell me a little bit about yes. that. <laughs> uh, well, we were in Vegas with the bananas and, and my wife and I rarely get to go anywhere and do anything together uh, these days, especially without the kids, just because it's it's tough. Um, but, uh, we got to go and we were talking about things that we could do that we could only do while we were there. And I was like, we got to find something crazy and ridiculous to do. And, and that, you know, that's one of those things you, you see in Vegas in all the movies and people getting married and we're obviously already married, but we saw that there were vow renewal packages and, and it wasn't like break the bank. It was reasonable. And I was like, that sounds like so much fun. And she agreed. So we, uh, we went uh, to the Graceland wedding chapel, which is where John Bon Jovi got married. And it was in the movie fools rush in with Salma Hayek and Matthew Perry. So it's a pretty famous place. And we, we went and did a vow renewal with the King himself. And even uh, the dancing umpire with the bananas was my flower boy. So That's I was, what I was, I was gonna honored say. to have the flower special boy. guests. Yes. He was he's, a flower he's, man. And he was, and he's, <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Not out. his first time doing that. He had experience prior. So it uh, I called like it, it a pro. I'm, yeah. I'm going to put a link to that video on our page so anybody <laughs> can go see it because it is hilarious. It's good. Yes. It's, <laughs> even Elvis is laughing in the background. And you got to imagine that guy's probably seen it all. So uh, it was funny. It was good. And she must be along for this ride. I mean, you started doing this after you got married. You started I did. In- well, I was a very was normal it? guy. We were two kind of lost souls two kind of lost single parents when we met and uh both recovering from you know bad relationships before and, and trying to put it together and uh, because you know my my older kids are my stepchildren and, and my son is from a previous relationship our daughter our youngest is the one we have together so you know when we met life looked a lot different than, than it does now it just um it, we've been very fortunate and, and and god has been very good and, and we're very blessed and that's that's how we feel and uh, you know, we we both said that our our wedding our wedding vow renewal was probably more fun than our actual wedding. So, uh, <laughs> it really and it was like a good it. way, I think, because when we got married, we got married as those people. And so, I feel like this is a good way. You know, sometimes I'd say, "Man, you didn't sign up for this," but now I can say that you have signed up for this and this right? crazy life. That <laughs> so she can't get mad. We're at all man. straight now. Yeah. Um, what is one of the craziest things you've ever seen happen at a bananas game, whether it was one of the bananas or one of their competitors or possibly someone in the audience? What's the craziest thing that's happened that maybe wasn't even supposed to happen? Oh, man. Uh, well, we we were doing a banana Nana tryout the other night uh, okay. with some small grannies out there trying to like dance and like the fans have to vote for the best one. And this one lady started to almost take her shirt off and I, I had to dive out in front of her. It was hilarious. The place went 
nuts, but that's, you know, a different show than the one we're looking to provide. So uh, that was certainly an interesting moment, uh, but it got a big reaction. And of course she won. Go figure the crowd. voted for her. Even if you take your clothes off, you're going to win. Like, oh no, we're, <laughs> I'm in front of her. Like, <laughs> got a very well, good reaction. A, so uh, if that's fun. what she was going for. Even just the tease of it. Um, well played. She, uh, she, she came to the right place. So that might've been it. Um, what is Banana Land? Uh, Banana Land is uh, for, well, it's it's a couple things. Namely, it is a docu series that was filmed for ESPN Plus, which is still available on there, but it's also available on Hulu. And it follows. It's a five episode series that follows our 2022 uh, world tour that we did. This the Seven City World Tour. But Banana Land is also the term that we use to refer to our home in Grayson Stadium, in Savannah, Georgia, and sometimes to just. When we are there with our fans and our teams, everywhere we go is banana land. And so that's kind of like our one of just those terms we use as a blanket term to encompass all of the uh, the craziness that is what we are when we're fully operational. Now, can we see you on the show? Do you make an appearance on that show on the documentary? You can. Uh, yes. I, I don't have any of the backstage interviews or anything, but they uh, I talk enough in the show that they found places to kind of have me. And you, you can <laughs> see and hear me in action uh, throughout the series through through, I think, four out of the five episodes. I do. pop. Oh, up. cool. That's got to be so much fun. Um, it's now very cool. you have merch for sale. You've got like a merch page. I do. Uh, just through my own link tree, uh, just a, as an entertainer working for years in, in pro wrestling and MMA and everything. Uh, I've had different graphic design work done. And so I host all of my stuff on a T public page that I have. So if anybody follows me at, at young professor G across all platforms of social media, you can find my link to my link tree and that'll take you to uh, all the different merchandise options that I personally have. And you've got a bunch of merch on clearance right now. Cause I saw it online. Yeah, the other day it was uh, everything was up for sixteen dollars. What's cool about T Public? They do a couple of those sales every month, so it's like thirty five percent off. So you catch it then, and it's uh, it's pretty reasonable. I love it. Um, do you love your life as an as an announcer for the Savannah Bananas and everything else? How are you? Do you love everything that's going on right now? Every single day, um, I'm blessed. You know, I've 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 as I said, I lived a very different, very ordinary life for a very long time. And not all of it was easy. There were a lot of some really hard knocks along the way. And so getting a chance to do this, to be a part of this, uh, and to make so many people happy everywhere we go, including my own family, um, it is an absolute blessing. And I am thrilled every single day. Waking up every day is a complete joy. It looks like your life is so fun and I'm so jealous of you and the games look like such a blast. I am dying to go to one now that I've been introduced to it and I really appreciate you telling me all about it. You want to throw maybe some of your uh, handles out there? So how can people follow you online? How do we get your merchandise? Sure. Just uh, follow me across all platforms. It's at young professor G. If you go type that in, in, in YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, you will find me and you'll find the links to that. And I am in the middle right now of writing a book on how to be a professional live event host because there are oh. no books on how to do that. And uh, I don't know when it'll be out, but my goal is to have it probably by the middle of next year, 2024. So if you follow me, especially on LinkedIn, you'll get some more insights and some more things as to what's going on. And that's part of my life. Well, I'm following you online. So as soon as I see it, we'll be sharing it out on the Delightfully Different podcast uh, pages and the Lexi and Banks pages, my old radio show. And I really appreciate you talking to me. This was so interesting. Thank you so much for reaching out. It was my pleasure. This was so much fun. Thank you so much. I've got links posted to all of Matt's and the Savannah Bananas socials. And you can also watch Matt's vow renewal ceremony and the ESPN documentary promo for Banana Ball at DelightfullyDifferentPodcast.com and on all of my socials. Coming up next Thursday on Delightfully Different, you've probably heard of drag queens, but I'll be talking to Buck Wild, a drag king from Dallas, Texas. If you or someone you know lives life differently, hit me up. Lexi on the radio at gmail.com. That's L E X I on the radio at gmail.com or delightfully different podcast.com. Have a delightful week.